Hey, Greg. You wish for a little more action? I do wish for more action, Mike. As you wish, Greg. Let's party! Greg, we're just getting started. Left. Boxing King Media in association with Boxer Delight to have with me the knowledge Spencer Ferron. Spencer, it's been, it's been a while. How are you? I'm blessed, highly favoured. I mean, Alhamdulillah, even better for seeing you, my friend. How's life? How's everything going? Everything's good, you know. Everything's good. Everything's good. I see you busting the wild hydrates now. So you're not sponsored by wild hydrates now? No, just a nice, comfortable hoodie. Okay, so what? They gave it to you for free? You're promoting their stuff. Look at that. I'm just plugging wild hydrates right now. They want to give you some money, Raz. You, you could talk about the, the, the names on the, on the mic instead if you want. Huh? I said you can talk about the names on the mic if you want. Yeah, ready to fight. Oh, yep. Yeah. And that's, what's that? Fast line and the box robber. Come on, you've been there. So I've got big, big you guys up. You know, Boxing King Media. That's enough for the plugs. <laughs> um, I want some money, bro. Um, obviously, we were all expected to be at the London O2 Arena. Boatsy Aziz on fight week. Sally gets an injury. Uh, how, diff how difficult is that for... Both fighters, Dan obviously for having the injury, and Joshua. I know he's he's flown over Virgil and the whole teammates at his whole camp in the UK for the first time. Um, unfortunately, this is part and parcel of professional boxing. These things can happen like anything else. Uh, and I, may I add, Dan Aziz's injury is 100% legit. It's not because he wouldn't pull out. Um, Larry Akandaya, who he used to manage, uh, is now working alongside with Buddy McGurk. Uh, with Dan Aziz and, I've, and like it was so like unks, it, it's, it's serious and Larry has no reason to lie to me you know what I mean even though I've got a big friggin mouth but I see he got, he's got no reason to lie to me and it is actually legit and not only that but Dan was getting a record purse do you really think he'll pull out of that a record purse where he was getting like something like maybe four times the money that he's ever earned before do you really think he's going to pull out if it wasn't legit come on and he fancied the fight as well so no he, it was a legit thing I mean, if you're someone like Joshua Bates, who's, who's, like I said, brought over his whole team, you know, how does he cope with this? Um, how, how much time does he take off before he goes straight back into camp? I know boxers are keen to get the fight rescheduled before the end of the year. Um, if they are, then he's going to just keep on ticking over right now. Um, one thing that you've got to give Joshua Bates, he's, he's um, profoundly professional. Do you know what I mean? Uh, I was fortunate enough just to walk past the gym where he trains down in Credin, uh, and just to see him work, he's properly on it. Uh, the work that Virgil Hunter has set up, it's, it's, a, it's a good, it's a very, very good fit. So, you know what I mean? It's nice to see. Spence, this, was, this interview will probably go out um, later tonight or tomorrow, but there is another great, well, it was the chief support, it's now the main event, Lawal versus Chamberlain, um, great fight, great turnout here at York Hall. How do you see that fight playing out? Um, I'm South London, bro. Straight. No, I'm <laughs> kind of going to say. No, on the reals, um, I've got um, Chamberlain on points in this one. I think he's technically the better fighter. Um, but that's not me knocking anything of Lowell. Um, I think Lowell is an incredible puncher. But I think there's something that's lacking in the belief department. Hopefully he's got that belief because he looked very tunnel vision when they were at the weigh-in and like focus on it. But I would go for um, Isaac Chamberlain on... Uh, maybe a late stoppage and I mean late stoppage through fatigue like around about 9 or 10 but then I've got him on points um, maybe over, over 12 rounds maybe 116-112 in favour of Isaac Chamberlain Next week uh, there are no shows in the UK it's uh, all eyes on Saudi Arabia Tyson Fury, Francis Ngannou the lineal, the lineal heavyweight champion versus the UFC heavyweight champion um, just your thoughts on, on the event, the build-up, what you've seen so far and, and what's to come? I think the build-up's been fantastic. You know what I mean? I see the adverts and everything. I love the Mike Tyson advert where he pops his head out of the sand. It's, 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 it's good. It is what it is, right? I'm just going to be real with it. It is what it is. Um, this is cool prize fighting. I'm glad that um, Tyson Fury can get financially rewarded in the way that he wants to be financially rewarded. And not only that, but Ngannou. Ngannou got a fantastic story. I mean, his highest purse in the UFC as a world champion and noted, um, noted as the hardest puncher by this machine that they put him on as the hardest puncher in the world. And the, his highest purse was $650,000. He's getting $8 million now. You know what I mean? So, well, for that, I'm happy for him. 
But, you know I mean? I would say peak punches in heavyweight history would have trouble with Tyson Fury. Not saying Tyson Fury would beat him, but I'm saying peak punches, they would have trouble with him. Like Mike Tyson, um, uh, Lennox Lewis. We saw what he done with Deontay Wilder, but Deontay Wilder doesn't come from the school of thought of the technical ability of a uh, Mike Tyson or a Lennox Lewis. And there's no disrespect to Deontay Wilder. I'm not hating him. I think he's a superb puncher. He's learning the trade now. So I think, so I don't see Ngannou doing much in there, yeah? I, I'm just going to be real. It's not his forte. It's not his sport. That's like me being the best person at table tennis, you being the best person at tennis, and I'm saying, I'm going to battle you at your, at your discipline. You're going to beat me hands down, right? Even though like, the disciplines are pretty the same, you hit a ball with a, with a bat. No, it's totally different. So it's going to be totally different come fight time. Uh, I've got Tyson Fury winning how he'd, he'd want to win and dragging this out and maybe that's out boxing him, out, out punching him. You know what I mean? But I'd like to see Ngannou land a couple hard shots to see what will happen or the, or, or the effect of that. But no, I can't, I can't see nothing. I can't see nothing of that happening. The, the great news is that Fury Usyk is signed. They are going to officially announce I saw that. the date I after saw that the final. I saw that on your channel. You know what I mean? Spencer, Spencer Brown. Brown. Spencer Brown's my guy. You know what I mean? My namesake, but I'm better looking. You know how it goes. But I am far better looking. No, but um, I think that's excellent. I think that's a, that's, it's, it's great because now we're going to finally get to have a unified, undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. Something that we haven't seen since Lennox has got stripped of his crown. So, yeah, it's great. Spence, you've always spoken to me about people's opinion and, and sometimes boxing fans are, are fickle in their, in their assumptions at times. You know, a lot of people said Fury's avoiding Usyk, Fury's ducking Usyk, and there's a lot of criticism towards Tyson Fury. But Spencer Barron clearly said yesterday, who's Tyson Fury's manager? That Tyson Fury made this fight happen. Tyson Fury is the one that wanted this fight and it, and it made it happen for December 23rd. Well, we can't argue with that, can we? We've got to be happy at the fact this. But what I do know is the thing that really, really pushed him to say I'm taking this fight was seeing Usyk's performance against Daniel Dubois. Right? And you're thinking, well, I'm, Fury be thinking, I'll smash this guy to bits. Right? Two bits. So, and that's why the fight's happened. I'm glad that the fight's happening. I'm glad that we're going to see a unified heavyweight champion of the world, an undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. I believe it's, I think it's even also more superb that the fact that we're going to see um, uh, both men get financially rewarded and the eyeballs be put on Saudi Arabia. We you saying Ben Gray, this guy's a real guy, right? And to see, like, to see real eyeballs put on Saudi Arabia, but let's not deflect I'm keeping this thing 100. Let's not deflect on what is going on right now in Palestine and what's going on in the Gaza and what's happening to both sides of Israelis and of Palestinians, right? Let's not deflect from that, right? And I'm trying to say this now. Right, right is right and wrong is wrong. You know what I mean? And the major thing that should be done or when you've got powerhouses like Saudi Arabia, they can be using this as a platform to promote peace, to promote love, and to get some common denominator between the two because I'm seeing human lives, I'm seeing young children die and all the rest of it. You know what I mean? And when you understand the truthness of what the Ummah of Islam is, what the Ummah is, that we are one body. So, you know what I mean? If, if somebody's being affected ar around the world that happens to bow down to the, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the same God that I bow down to, then I'm going to take it. I'm going to be aggrieved by it. But then also I'm going to take it as a hum human being that life, life is life. You know what I mean? So I don't care who, what side, I don't care what God you pray to, all the rest of it, that life is life. We should be respecting life. And there should be one, only one commandment in the whole world, and that is to do unto others as you want done unto yourself. Spencer, no, well said. Um, I echo those words as well. Um, just before I let you go, Eddie Hearn's spoken about Eubank Ben happening abroad if it doesn't happen in the UK. If you use it go on the 23rd, does, does Eddie go on the same day or does he avoid that day? If I was Eddie Hearn, I would avoid that day like the plague, right? Because you ain't going to win on that one, right? They want eyeballs on the country, but they don't want competition on eyeballs on the country. And I'm going to be real, Eubank Ben is a big fight here, right? Saudis will most probably want to put it on, right, if they do. But it doesn't compare, you know what I mean? Let's just be real, it does not compare to Tyson Fury versus Usyk. The lineage... Of, of that, it doesn't compare. And Ben and Eubank, talking about the seniors now, they're big, but they are nowhere in comparison to the lineage of the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world. Just about anti-Joshua, um, he's 
gone into a retreat where no phone uh, in the room in darkness for for a few days, couple of days. Um, you're a very spiritual guy, Spencer. I just spoke to Tunde as well. Um, what, what can you achieve from that? What can you get from that? What, why is he doing that? Um, you're going to have to ask him that. You know what I mean? I could have my thoughts for why he's doing it. Uh, I think, unfortunately, anything that Andy Joshua does uh, is going to get scrutinised and, and dissected and opinionated over anything that he does. And I think that what Andy Joshua is trying to do is what's going to be best for Andy Joshua. If he's doing that, if he's like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to gain something for it, then I'm all for it, man. I hope that you get um, some spiritual enlightenment and some spiritual awareness and some spiritual upliftment. The final one, uh, he's not going to fight Wilder next. Eddie's clearly said that the Wilder fight is not going to be next. And if it does happen, it'll be March or April. But who does Andy Joshua fight, in your opinion, in December or January? Who would you like to see him be tested by? Who would I like Andy Joshua to, to see fight right now? Um, I'd like to see Andy Joshua fight social injustice.